Aubrey, and last summer I bought a pirate ship. She's a 51 Formosa. Welcome back. This week we take delivery of a box of brand new Ford Lehman parts, and that is very exciting. The Lehman is kind of the heartbeat of the old boat. We give the Teak some much needed love, and as per usual, I am up to my normal brand of shenanigans. So, uh, yeah, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know how to tell you guys exactly what I did this week. Well, we'll start here. So, my mom came to visit uh, from Oregon, and she decided to get an Airbnb, which I thought was great. We get a shower, maybe a hot bath. Uh, the kids could play, and we get to visit. Well. In the yard of the Airbnb, there were some ducks. Ducks that were laying eggs. <laughs> these are duck eggs. Your little handbag. And with these duck eggs, I'm going to do an experiment. And we're going to see if any hatch in the incubator I just bought. We're going to have boat ducks. They're good swimmers. Good sailors? I don't know yet. Let's they find out. Over the deck? Ducks don't poop. But before we get into that, Let's go see what's happening on the pirate ship. <laughs> There's a couple things that I don't ever want to sail without, and one of them is definitely autopilot, and this hydraulic system is gonna make the autopilot work more efficiently, hopefully. Woo, Atlas, this is a job for you. You can open boxes since How we can't. How do you hold a knife? Like a very fancy Frenchman. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, let me, should I give it to him? No, no, <laughs> knock me out of my face. Either and we way. wanted to make sure to go with the most powerful system we could go with because this boat, she's heavy. She's a big girl. She is 51 feet, but she weighs a lot. So we went with the bigger system so that when we get into any kind of weather, the autopilot and the steering can keep The up. delivery for our engine from American Diesel has arrived. He's so excited about this. Mm. You are a certifiable weirdo. Oh, look at that. Brand new molded hoses with uh, spring retainers. Here is a new thermostat, 77 degrees. The amount of items in this box is both exciting and horrifying. This baby's gonna purr like a kitten. Searle's favorite. What is it, darling? We got a drum roll, please. Proper. Such a hot nerd. I love it. So I'd love to make this part of my leather dossier. Ah. So that is your Ford. And then we got a Ford Lehman. This is done by the American Diesel Company. Ah. Here we got some new oil lines. Ah to run for the transmission and for the engine oil coolers. Nice and fancy. And you can see they're nicely hy hydraulic clamp. Oh, you're holding it like a newborn baby. What is it? This is our new starter. Uh, we don't have a spare and it's essential to have a spare. This will go in new and then our old one will service and keep as a spare? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so the girls have headed off to Bellingham to go see Joy. They're going to make a new fitted sheet for the rebirth cushion. And I'm back at the boat along with Blake. And I'm going to tackle installing some of the hydraulic stuff since we've had the hoses have been cut for us. And now we should be able to complete this. Reading the manual and... Setting this up on the bench before I install it and then try to deal with all of this small stuff inside there. The NAC3 autopilot computer will be the brains of our autopilot system. It contains the electronics needed to operate our hydraulic steering pump while also communicating with the other components, including heading sensors and rudder feedback unit. Out of the box, the setup can be done on a table, making it easy. We are setting the whole boat up with NEMA 2000. So before we install the hydraulic pump, we need to use, uh, attach the plumbing fittings that we're gonna be using. So these are the ones we're gonna be using, but there's also the metric fittings like this. The system needs a new pump. 
And we have a reversible hydraulic gear pump for boats up to 70 feet. Bigger is better in our case because the pirate ship is heavy. This is the largest 12 volt pump available. We hope to not have any issues with a larger oversized motor so that we can enjoy a little less strain on the overall system. Now that all the fittings are on, now I need to place it on the existing platform that's underneath the bed. And then the plumbing will just loop around the back of that. And here is your left and right, and then your reservoir over there. It is now fastened into position. Okay, so now that we have the pump installed, let's put on the new hoses. So I got all these hoses done with 90 degrees. So it will attach a lot easier to the pump and not put too much strain on those angles. The rest of the components will talk to each other on the NEMA backbone. So the brain only needs three wires, power in, power out, to the drive unit, and the NEMA hookup. Down the line, it will make everything much more simple for problem solving. So I've wired power and I've wired the drive motor and NEMA. That's all that this unit requires. Mounted the four screws here and it's gonna sit right here. Now we have to start putting some of the NEMA components together. One of these is gonna be the receiver for the rudder position sensor. One of these is hooked up for power and one of these are gonna be the NAC3 computer. And then you always have a terminator on the very end. On the other side of the home station is where we're gonna be positioning the Precision 9 compass. Uh, this one is gonna be the compass. The compass runs in here here is the new Precision 9 compass in the old Ben Mar location. So things are coming along really nicely. We've really dug into a lot of the crucial systems on the boat and I'm feeling very excited and very comfortable at the thought of taking this boat down the Pacific Northwest and into Mexico. Good job, I think, today. First coat of CETOL on the bulwark. Working overalls on. We're gonna go put coat number three of the sea toll on the board. Let's go. Yeah. So what we're doing here is removing the starter, which is the original starter. Uh, it's working, but the exhaust elbow has previously leaked all over it. So I just want to clean it up, but we have a brand new one to put in its place. So there's four bolts all the way around. 
and you just slide that right out. Slap in the new one. Now there's quite a heavy piece of equipment and my legs are squashed. It's like a little rocket ship. So this has got like a thrust bearing. So mm -hmm. as you turn this thing on, the speed of this rotation forces this forward into to mesh with the flywheel mm -hmm. and it starts the engine. The moment you get off the ignition, this flicks straight back in. Cool, I learned something new. Ooh, isn't that fancy? And what is that? What does that run a, a Miss Lone Star? Uh, this is about a thousand bucks for a whole brand new, but you can buy, buy a brush set and it won't cost you that much. But the exciting thing is that the pieces that we're taking off right now are actually not broken. So the cool thing about that is that we're going to service them and then they'll become spares. So what we learned while uh, sailing in the Bahamas is that you need as many spares as possible that you can fit on the boat. And this is a large boat, so we're going to have lots of spares. And that way when you get into a country that doesn't have um, the infrastructure for shipping like the U.S. does, you have a lot of that stuff that's really crucial already on the boat. So we're keeping the spares, servicing the spares, and then keeping them on the boat here. So this engine is going to be kind of new. Like brand spanking new, and I'm pretty stoked. You're amazing, darling. Absolutely amazing. You sure about that? I am. This Did is the new get... one. Oh, it's got a gasket on it. Oh, yeah, you got a oh, gasket on you. Fancy. Oh my gosh, okay. let me see. So, this is your water pump. You're you just too s... excited about this. <laughs> and basically, it causes positive pressure, which forces it out that side. Uh, yeah. This is like how a jet ski works. They have a monster one like this. So it basically sucks the water up from the bottom of the jet ski. The <laughs> magic happens and it's out the back. Okay, we'll make magic happen with this one. Okay. I'm a little bit... I can't hold it. Dig it, dig it, dig it. Okay. So make sure we get good coat of this on both sides. This is nice high tech stuff, so... All right. So I collected, I think about 26 eggs from the pond with the kids and I put them in a beer box. Okay, what's in the High Life box? We've got 20 some odd duck eggs. And what do you think my success rate's gonna be? You got 20 eggs? Yeah. No, baby. I don't think they're all gonna hatch. And then we have 20 ducks. We have a very large bathtub. So growing up, I was raised in the country, hours and hours away from the ocean. So this is, uh, my family has really <laughs> been surprised at this choice of lifestyle. So I always find myself trying to bring the farm onto the boat. So I collected over 20 eggs with the kids. I think it was like 26 eggs. And I ordered two incubators. Step one, affix the egg turner <laughs> to the egg turner socket. Oh, you're such a good sport. Step two. <laughs> No, this one you just let them lie all over the show. No, there's like little dividers in that one. That one's a cheaper one. A very cheap one from Amazon and like a decent one from Amazon. And I thought we'd do a little experiment. Um, I'm always wanting to give the kids the experience I had growing up, which is uh, really getting to, to see things come to life and are, are birthed and grow. And um, I think it's just really important for kids to understand the cycle of life. So we're gonna do a candling session. Hey Delilah, we're gonna see what's in the duck eggs. Oh my goodness. Do you remember in the picture how it how it kind of went like that and then it made it so okay, it looks Aubrey, like it's it focused? Yet? I decided to hatch these eggs. Now, I didn't really know if they were gonna hatch. Um, we were able to fit, uh, I think, 21 eggs into the incubators because they're actually really big farm ducks. They're not like your normal mallards. So these things are like goose eggs. They start hatching as we're rebuilding the Ford Lehman. And the kids and I are just over the moon. So the first one that comes out that should be is a black. <laughs> and he is just the cutest. Oh my gosh. You're like, that one's gonna come out at exactly two o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guy. Yeah. Where's his head? It's kind of like right there. Okay, yeah, definitely. I'll let you know. I can't believe you helped him and he's still okay. Well, he was out. Oh, don't oh. let him fall in the water. As the rest of the ducks finish cooking, we complete a few more projects around the boat. 
Yesterday we didn't film but we started messing around with the davits and we wanted to locate it on deck and so Tony was able to mark out on the deck so now we got to drill it out and do thicken epoxy because this whole off deck is cord. While the epoxy dries, we dig back into the engine. Make sure everything likes to cut your hands. It's an engine. <laughs> Maybe I should employ some duck help. Yeah. Just as eight more ducklings hatch. He's stuck this morning, huh? He's stuck? Maybe come out? Okay, come on. Fluff out, bud. Fluff out. There you go. Okay, there you go. This next part of Arts and Crafts okay. Hour is probably okay. my favorite. Mark the outline pretty please, pretty lady. Okay. Thank you. Although we didn't film the whole thing. Right? Hell yeah! The end result is something magical. A few more steps in between, we end up with this beauty. Thank you guys so much for watching. Tune in next time to see exactly what I do with nine baby ducks on a 51 foot pirate ship. Honestly, I haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you guys so much. Thank you to my patrons. Thank you to my sponsors. Big shout out to Precision Sales and Keenan Filters. Thank you guys so much for coming through for me on these projects. We'll see more of them in the episodes to come. And this pirate ship is so close to getting in the water. Um, if you can't wait till next week, I have a daily show on Vimeo. Uh, check the link below and you can see me every day what I'm doing real time. I love you guys so much. Thank you to my patrons, and I will see you next time.